Good evening, I'm Jeff Koinange, and this is Jeff Koinange Live. Tonight, we're asking the question you're probably asking. What is going on in Kenya today? Our main political parties, TNA, ODM, internal wrangles abound. Also, whatever happened to separation of powers under the Constitution? The judiciary saying one thing, legislature another, executive yet another. We need to get down and tackle what is going on out there. Tonight, my guest was supposed to be former Attorney General Charles Jonjo. He called in a couple of hours ago and said he was ill. We wish him a speedy recovery, but the show must go on. So I've got two great guests tonight, and you know what time it is. It is time to ask the hard questions. It is time for Jeff Koinange Live. to this live program here at the poolside of the Intercontinental Hotel and in particular those who are hearing impaired and our sign language interpreter is Maresha Awiti. Welcome all to the show. To my immediate right, he is former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, former Member of Parliament for Lagdera. He is Farah Malim and he knows a thing or two about law. By the way, he is ODM Damu. But he's disappointed in his party, we'll ask him why. To my far right, I can't remember any party that this man has not done work for. That's right, you name it, going back years, Tony Gashoka has probably been a key figure in each of those parties. Tony, am I right or wrong? Before I answer you, Jeff, I've just come back from Mumbai in India. And I, I was there with your good friend Edward Murillo. Yes. For the wedding of Mukesh's son, Puresh and Prina. Correct. So could you at least wish them well? I wish them all the very best, Tony. Now, I want to talk to you about political parties. Of which you have worked for all of them. President Jomo Kenyatta moved from Kau to Kanu to become a president. President retired Daniel Arab Moy moved from Kanu to Kanu to become a president. Retired President Mwai Kibaki moved from Kanu to DP to NAK to NAC eventually to PNU to become a president. The former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, moved from Fort Kenya to NDP, to LDP, to Fort Kenya, New ODM Kenya, to ODM trying to be a president. The current president, my friend Uhuru Kenyatta, moved from Kanu to TNA to become a president. I follow in this illustrious footsteps. <laughs> You uh, must know your history. So there is, when a you point, talk to, there is a point to all of this, Tony. And I am... You are the alphabet soup of political parties. As Kenya has grown and political parties have had to develop, one of the major clamor for the new constitution was to make parties sober up and make parties understand the need to create vehicles that last beyond the individual. Don't forget, the retired President Mwai Kibaki was shopping for a party. By the way, Tony. And I, he had to look for PNU before I go when Farah, he didn't have none. Before I go too far, there's a tweet here, and i got to read it right away before we forget, because you're talking about political parties. People refer to you as a political prostitute. If that is true, so is Raila Odinga. If that is true, so is His Excellency, the President. So if it is true, so are those others I have named. May I even say the gracious and the most wonderful Kenneth Matimba moved from Kanu to Fort Astley. And you want me to name where Farah Marim came from before he went to ODM? So please, Jeff Koinange, because you're not a card-carrying member, do not judge the people that make destiny. And we have had to make destiny because we are in a dictatorial regime that denied us multi-party democracy. That guess you almost had here, the Honorable Attorney General Charles John made this country a one-party state. I wish I had found him here and given him a piece of my mind. <laughs> Farah, does this man always have the right answers? I mean, I can't believe it. Tony always has the right answers. No, he, he, he... What he says is true. But you have to understand the genesis of all those movements. Yeah. All right. You know what? We don't need to go into history because let's talk uh, about... Uh, the just, just to talk a little bit about it. Mike Kibaki democratically could have been able to work within Kanu in a democratic, fair, you know, level yeah. playing field, be able to 
wrestle Kano from where he does. And he did for a while. Well, he can't, you can't do it because of the system, the way the system was. You couldn't do that to Kenyatta. You can't wrestle. It's always a strong man. So even those of us who left one party to form another party, it's because we never got that space in the party. And now that we and have all these parties, yes. Mara, let me, let's get to this. Now yes. that we have all these parties, yes. we have all these, I guess, more parties, more problems. Look at TNA. Formed what? Barely uh, two years ago? Two years ago. I, Look at the I, wrangles inside TNA I am, right now. I am embarrassed. I agree because, with you. I agree with yes. you. Yes. Look, always it's the ruling party that facilitates the formation of many other parties so that the opposition can be disjointed and can be disunited. This is what you have to understand. Ford, Ford Asili, Ford Kenya. You, you get my point? ODM, ODMK, ODM. Mm -hmm. I mean, all this facilitation one way or the other comes always from the ruling party. But having said that, I don't want to dwell into TNA. I'm, I'm one person who believes in allowing the space to the owners. Political parties are clubs. So don't, don't make the business of interfering in other clubs in the way they run their business. Mm -hmm. I only want to worry about what kind of, 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 of a lineup they're going to have, what kind of policies they're going to have, and how we're going to compete with them as ODM. The interference in one party has not ceased still yet. And that's where the problem is. I don't want to talk about the internal dynamics of TNA because I believe, as a principle, political parties should be allowed to develop, to nurture, to basically be the bedrocks of political ideology that separates one party from the other. Okay, we don't have that right now. All right, Tony, let me ask you this. Is TNA imploding or are these just the growing pains of a, polit of a new political party? Um, the TNA is the National Alliance Party that is going through a reform process. The media has been saying wrongly that there is rebellion in TNA. There is no rebellion that I'm aware of. What has happened in TNA? It was made six months, barely six months before an election. So the people who hold office hold it on an interim basis. In fact, were appointed to hold those positions at an interim basis. And now that the party has won elections, members and MPs and governors and other people were elected. So the question begs, has the leadership of TNA been tested to the electorate so that they can elect the leaders that they want? And all the problems within TNA will have to be accountable and transparent to an elected leadership. And one of the problems that we are having now is that the appointed people who run the presidential campaign successfully feel ownership of TNA. But once the elections were through, TNA became bigger than them. And therefore, those MPs and others clamoring for elections are correct. The president, I feel, must stick away from the matter and allow the delegates of TNA to elect all the people that they wish. Those who sit on office yeah. can defend their positions, but they must be challenged by others. What about the alleged missing 60 million? I think that there are problems that I cannot confirm in terms of misappropriation of funds because there are, are many allegations that have been made. But part of why you want these democratic elections is to have transparent processes that can allow people the right of reply, allow people to say what is right or wrong. But right now, it's just media reports. And okay. I agree with Farah but let, that at that point, yeah. you must allow internal processes. Okay, but calling TNA elections at, literally at the, five, at the 11th hour, last minute, are they trying to counter this ODM election, trying to go after the youth, trying to garner that youth vote? Is, is, is that what it looks like? Jeff, political parties are clubs. It's not subject to universal suffrage. Have you ever heard the internal dynamics of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, how they choose their chairman and the rest? You never hear about that. Have you ever heard of the Tories in, uh, in the UK or the Labour Party? These are clubs. These are clubs. These are ideological clubs. They are not supposed to be subjected to those masses. The people who go together in that private club are supposed to sit together and decide how they want to do it. The manner in which we are trying to do now, run political parties, is enormous. It, it's, it's bad. Mm. I'll give you an example. How many parties did have presence in every location of this country? UDF, for example. How many polling stations did they not get even one vote? There are many stations that they never got even one vote. One time there was talk that uh, Kioni, yeah, who was the, the vice president, who yes. was the running mate yes. of Mudabadi, in the polling station where he was, that he never voted. I don't believe that. I believe Kioni <laughs> and his wife must have voted. But did he get any more than two votes? No. But, but then there was a chairman, there was a secretary, there was a treasurer. There were all those in that grassroots. Which means those people went and voted for another Jeff, party. Jeff, there, is one there, there is no, there is no, let me just finish. 
We have not digitalized this such that when you are registered with this party, you cannot vote for another party. There are people who are there multiply moving from one party to the other party. Yeah. If we allow these kind of things in which you have to go, for example, you have to go to central province. I bet the bulk of the people in central province voted for TNA. Sure. Why would you want them to come and decide who becomes the leader of ODM? Are you getting my point? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to give them, you can give them a staggered, or you can give them, and the same thing with Loyanza. 80%, 90% of Loyanza people went and voted for him. Tony, your point. I want to disagree completely with the deputy speaker, yeah. with respect. The problem we have in this country is this. Whenever people from Central Kenya, so-called Central Kenya, mm -hmm. TNA or other party meet, there's a national crisis. It began from the time of Gemma meetings and all this kind of tribal chauvinism. But when ODM meet and Rango, it's headline news. The last three weeks, Kenya has seen headline news. Ababu versus Zani, all these things are headline. But if the TNA brigade is having questions about elections in TNA, somehow we can't discuss it. There is a higher ideal, ideological ideal, etc., etc. We'll come to ODM. I want to just say, on behalf of TNA, the fact that a lot of the members in TNA are genuine nationalists. TNA is the largest political party in Kenya. The president of Kenya got 50 plus 1 percent of the vote. He defeated the so-called diversified ODM to the man. He then went and won 25% in half the counties. So you cannot talk about TNA being a Central Kenya party. And I take offense from the deputy speaker and those people who can deal with the political realities of the day. And these are the people who said Rift Valley will never vote with TNA during Jubilee. I want to say this. There are important rangos in TNA that must be resolved. Sakaja and Olo are appointed individuals of the party. They do not own the party. Delegates of TNA across the country should be given the opportunity to elect their leaders and that debate should be encouraged in the media as much as the media is encouraging the debate on ODM elections. Okay, Tony, I remember not too long ago when you were the head of protocol at ODM House. Remember? Yes, I You, you were the head of protocol. You were inside the inner circle, if you will. Yes. Right? Yes. Looking at ODM now, the elections two days away. Looks like there's a rift literally right down the middle of ODM. There's the Joho Ababu group, right? Yes. There's Zani, uh, uh, Kajuang, the rest of the guys. I mean, there's there's a rift right down the middle. Can I can I spoil the party for you? Go on. There is no rift in ODM. ODM is Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga is ODM. Raila Odinga thrives on chaos. People must fight and then he'll take the winners and say, I allow democracy. He has never taken a hostage in all his political life. He used to sing me a song when I was director of protocol. I'm a fisher of men, fisher of men, if you follow me. Raila, true? <laughs> so you know it. So I want to make it clear. He doesn't care if Ababu wins or Zani. All of them, will, he will never take a hostage and he will never go down defending any man. And if you don't doubt me, ask Charity Ngilu, ask Najib Barala, ask Ruto, ask Modavadi, ask anyone in the Pentagon. And if those are too high up for you, ask Meguna Meguna. I can tell you next week, you'll be calling Otieno Kajuang, who'll be crying. After Raila says, I'm sorry, the people decide. Mm. Deputy Speaker, look, I, I, you are ODM. Yes, You're yes. still ODM. I'm still ODM. I'm still ODM. Committed to ODM. It's a movement for your information. Last time when I was here, I said ODM is as good as dead. Mm -hmm. That was out of disappointment, out of bitter feelings that we are allowing our party to go down there. It's a wake-up call I was sending to all the leadership of ODM. You, you get my point? ODM is a movement. It's a nationwide movement. I don't want to debate with uh, Tony on, on, on... I'm not going to say anything about Ruto. I'm not going to say anything about uh, 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 Ruto other than kind words. They are the leaders of parties and they deserve our respect. Mm -hmm. Odinga is our former prime minister. He is the leader of the party right now. He deserves the respect of every Kenyan. This business of trying to rubbish Odinga as an individual or a person is, is, is I mean, it's, 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 it's something that's been overplayed. Okay. Anyway, but having said that, yes. having said, said that, I was worried. I'm even more worried now, to be very honest to you. Remember I told you that every time you see a crisis in a political party that is a serious opposition political party, it's usually the ruling party, which is the government party, that creates the chaos. Mm -hmm. Up until a couple of days ago, I had no problem I was seeing this as an internal dynamics of the ODM elections. But now I'm seeing resources that are serious resources. All of a sudden, folks that I know who are very close to me and very friend, yeah. we're good friends of ours, 
are now moving around in choppers all over the country mm -hmm. stomping mm -hmm. with serious resources. And people who didn't have money before. People who didn't have money before. So where's that money coming where's from, Tony? Coming from? You, you know, no, you have to ask yourself that question. Can I, I was told. How much does a chopper cost an hour? Can, can I say this? The hundreds, person, hundreds of thousands. Can I answer the question? Hassan Joho is fighting his ground. There is no doubt in my mind that Ababu Namamba invested well in terms of political thinking because he brought on board Joho. He brought in capital. He brought in the coast. He brought himself in. Within that group, they've got several other people, as you are well aware. And they have put together a team, including the chairman, Nanok, who is running the chair. They've run a regional campaign. They've run a campaign that touches with capital. And of course, that capital has come to play. What if they lose? Now, I want to what say that, this. What if you ask group me about loses? my experience, yes. I want to tell you this. One of the biggest funders for ODM through the years when I was there was Adi Hassan Joho. So he, for a money, knows so. So I want to be very clear. I want to make myself clear. L me... On my heart as ODM, there is no doubt you cannot take on Joho without taking out the capital of the coast yeah. and his own personal But Farah Malim insists that funding could be coming Joho from across the aisle. No, no, no. Joho does no, no, not no, no. need a loan. No, no, no. Have a chopper. Jeff. The propaganda. Jeff, yeah, just a moment. You know, I'm talking from my heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling it as it is. Tony is a seasoned communication person and a PR person. When he defends ODM, he defends it with everything that he has. Mm -hmm. And everything else looks like rubbish. And you can go back to the to the writings of Slays and the interviews of Slays. Yeah. Today that he doesn't like them, you know, everything else, and he doesn't like Raila, uh, to be exact, everything goes as far as he's concerned. I know this party. I know when you were going for fundings and everything else. I know the limitations of everybody. There's something seriously amiss now. Good. Hold that thought. Seriously amiss Hold that thought, gentlemen, yeah, because he, he has a point there, man. <laughs> seriously Those choppers amiss. cost a lot of money. And let me tell <laughs> and you. And these folks are flying up and let, down let, this let country. Let me tell you. Yeah. We have heard so much. You, yeah. you remember there was... Hold on. Hold okay. that thought. Hold that thought. We're going to take a break, folks. Pay <laughs> okay. some bills. Joe, right. you can't Good. buy a chopper, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want it's to say. It's getting pretty smoking hot on this bench today because we're discussing issues, issues that are pertinent to us. TNA, ODM. Don't forget, we're coming to the Senate and the judiciary and the entire separation of powers for sure. My Twitter handle, at Koinanga Jeff. Tony's is at Tony Gashoka. Let's get tweeting. Let's get asking those questions. Let's take a break. Jeff Koinanga live. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> well done. And welcome back to Jeff Kanagan live from the poolside of the Intercontinental Hotel. If you've missed the first part of this show, you've missed a cracker of a show. We're talking issues, TNA, ODM, separation of powers. We're talking all these issues. Former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Farah Malim, and political strategist who's worked for every party, Tony Gashoka. I used to call him a gun for hire. Well, I could call him something else, but it won't be polite. Gentlemen, when you talk a point, and I'll get to your point right now. Let me read a couple of tweets, and the tweets are coming in really well and thick and fast. Mohammed Waliyeh, he says, Tell Tony Gashokur, not Gashokur, but Gashokur, that Sakaja Johnson won TNA, the presidency, and put it right on top. Is he saying that TNA inawenyewe? Hold that thought. Uh, there's another one here. Uh, Frederick Okango says, Tony Gashoka defines the largest party as the president's party, question mark. Right? And then there's another point. Nicodemus Mwani says, point of correction, Gashoka is lying to us. It was Jubilee Coalition and not TNA which won the elections. Okay? And then geologist Kenya says, Tony Gashoka anaropokwa tu hapa. She talks about that Fishes of Men song. Well, go. Do I answer that? Yeah, we'll get you point, real quick. Number, very quick. Number one, if it, they are right that the TNA is not the president's party, then one must ask, when I was working for Raila Odinga, I was very popular to ODM supporters. They would sing for me songs. I was director of protocol, number three in the office of the prime minister. Do they think the prime minister, former prime minister, was wrong to appoint me director of protocol? Was he wrong to appoint me his private secretary? The prime minister brought me into high office because of my capacity. Now, I am working for another political entity. Just like Deputy Speaker Falamanim last week said, he's unhappy with ODM, and now he's saying he's happy. What I am saying to viewers is this. We are discussing the issues, not the personalities. Raila Odinga wishes to be president of Kenya. 
Kenya, he must be under scrutiny. And I must say this, as long as Uhuru Kenyatta remains the president of Kenya, he remains the leader of the TNA. And that's the position. Okay, before you answer the question, Deputy Speaker, yes. Farah Malim has a point. Could TNA be sponsoring Joho's Ababu team to fly around with choppers? That's a point we want to break on. Yes. I want you to remember when we had the original fort. And then there was the Ugali in State House eating when the late Martin Shikuku was rumored to have gone there. And then they left here, Martin Shikuku and a few other friends, and went and met Matiba in London and convinced him that Foda Sili must be formed. The government of the day, which was Kanu, facilitated the formation of Foda Sili and Fort Kenya. Let me now tell you something else. The money that was used in the first place to put together BP, rumor had it came from the government. Yes, yes. What happened eventually? Matiba got 1.4 million votes. Our former president Kibaki got 1 million votes. Uh, 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 Jaramogi Oginga Odinga got about a million votes. So all votes. those combined? All those, what? If you only combine Matiba's votes and, and, and Kibaki's votes, the other thought would have been 2.4 million. I get his boys 1.8 million. Progressively continue. Even in the confirmation of uh, the split of ODMK and ODM, Tony has just now privately, I'm sure he doesn't want to go on camera here, he was telling us how he was part of the facilitating team. And that came from the government of the day. So the fact of the matter is that I am now convinced the way things are going right now. What was supposed to be an internal family matter suddenly has taken a proportion that was nationwide, that has massive resources, that essentially is not prepared to compromise. Let me ask you this then. Let me ask you Com this. To compromise on any, Let on me ask any you grounds, this. yes. So who benefits then if the Ababu Joho team takes this election on, yes. on, on Friday yes. and into the weekend? Yes. Who benefits the most? Can I tell you something? I was running for the Speaker of the Senate last time as an ODM guy. Am I right? Yes. As a court guy. Do you know that the governor of Mombasa and, and it was up there in the gallery while Vice President Ruto and President uh, uh, Uhuru were there making sure that a Jubilee person wins. He was there campaigning against him who came from the same party with him. Come on. I'm serious. I'm telling you. Joho campaigned against me. So much so that the number of votes that were taken from me, which were caught by Joho's efforts, has made the difference. And there was all those talk of the tamarind dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you heard about the tamarind Absolutely. dinner yes. and all those things. Yeah. And many people believe that if you are going to go for a second round, the Joho group were going to support TNA. Tony, who stands, uh, who's, who's, who's stands to gain the most? Raila Odinga. I was told not to mention him. I haven't finished that. Who stands to gain the most? I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Who stands to gain? If there is a split within the party yes. and there is no consensus, Chain of uh, uh, Jubilee, of course. Well, easily. Okay. Because there's going to be a split within the party. But, but they won't leave ODM. The losers won't leave. Listen to me. Listen to me. We're talking from history, my friend. I think, Jeff, we're I need talking to from history. Get into this debate. And if you, you, all you need to do is to go back from 1993. I think you asked about Jaramogi, Saturday and Sunday. Kibaki. You asked about uh, Saturday. Uh, uh, that's the moment. Yeah. Kibaki, Matiba, Wambalwa again, and, and, and Raila. All these things were sponsored by the government of the day. I want to say the... here in front of my good friend, the deputy speaker, yes. I tell you this, Raila has lost many men and he would not mind losing the deputy speaker, former deputy speaker. He will lose and get more. Please listen to me carefully, Jeff. Look at the 30 years of an enigma in Kenyan history. Raila Odinga marches on. James Orengo was not with him. Professor Anyang Nyong were not with him. They came and joined him. Now they wanted to run. He told them, stop. We have stopped. Others have gone. Down Masotieno. I am trying to explain this to you. Mm. Raila Odinga has to have political renewal. And there will be casualties, including my good friend, the Deputy Speaker. I would have wished for him better. But what will come reality-wise on Saturday or Sunday, he will say that people have spoken. So we move on. And the casualties will tell them, we will reward you in jobs later. And this is a political nature. Now, I want to say this. The people who began to underestimate Joho began not to understand that he's a student of Odinga. Do you know in 2007, Joho did not run for nomination in Mombasa. He was the only MP who got a direct nomination. He was not a party official. Do you know he got a direct nomination for Mombasa? Yeah, I and I want to make this clear. Joho has a direct relationship with the Prime Minister and nothing that Joho does has not been cleared by Raila. The chaos that you are seeing in ODM today is a chaos that Raila is aware of, a chaos that he needs in order to get rid of old friends. Okay, let me ask you this, Tony. Let me ask you this. You said 
next week if yeah. Tieno Kajuang loses, yeah. right? Yes. He will come on this show. Yes. And he'll spill the beans or he'll he'll, he'll open his heart. I don't know. I, I don't I cannot speak for him can before I, he I, comes I, to the show. But he did tell me after the elections he will be against a Jeff Koenangelai. Can I tell you something? This is history repeating itself. This party is not having this internal ragnos for nothing. The party leadership. I never contested for any seat myself. I was here and I told you I'm disappointed with my party, but I'm still firmly and fully within the party itself. And I'm not leaving. It doesn't matter whether it's going to form the next government or not. Mm -hmm. And I told you I will never take up a job from this government because I don't want to have a job. Yeah. I've never taken a job anywhere in the past. Yeah, you get my point. Mm -hmm. I do my own things. Go to school, take care of my family, and, and, and do anything else. Would you run again for DM? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. I'm, I'm going to be there in the party. I will support the party. I believe the party is an institution. It's an ideological institution that stands for something. Will you run with the party can, can if Joho wins? Just a moment. No, if Joho wins, just a moment. will you still run? Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Just go and tell me where. How do I trust? I how, you... how do I trust the fate of my party and this country in a person who is, is said to have got a degree when everybody here and me knows that he has never had, never went to school? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> And oh here, my. Here is, I hope, hope Joe is watching here, because I, I he needs to come on the show. Moment, yeah, yeah. I've tried to just, get him on just, the show. Just a moment. And this battle is going to be determined any time now. Yeah. And we have such a corrupt intelligence network. Uh, what do you call criminal investigation department? We have institutions of government that are coming down. We have a judiciary that is corrupt. Let me tell you, Jeff. We'll get to the judiciary in a moment. Here's a, here's a tweet here. Here's yes. a tweet. Sky T. Karish is saying, yes. is Farah saying that Hassan Joho has never supported Raila? No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Hassan Joho has supported Raila and Raila has supported Hassan Joho. <laughs> Let me be honest with you. Let me be honest. You can never become the governor of Mombasa without the solid code, what do you call votes there. Are you, you get my point? Yeah, yeah. Serious, serious solid. Yeah. And you know that. Everybody knows that. Now let, me, now, let me now tell you something. There are a lot of things that needs to be determined. We're not going to sit back here and say that we made a mistake some four years back. We are bequeathing this country to our own children. Uh, you, you understand my yeah. There are a number of questions that needs to be answered about some of these very senior people. When people talk about drugs, when people talk about, you know, dishonesty in, in acquiring some of these papers, when people talk about people corrupting and buying the judiciary, you know, because of money which nobody knows where it's come from. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a kind of thing. We have a country, for God's sake, we have children, we have a future to bequeath to them. We need to look at integrity as more than anything, not just money. That's a good point for our money. mates, because look, just listen, listen to this, Tony. I mean, look. Your MCAs impeach you as governor, literally throw you out. It goes to the Senate. Senate literally is rubber stamps it, and you're sent home. High Court stops that. It reinstates you, basically, but they've already told your, gov your deputy to appoint a deputy of her own. I mean, who is the governor of Embu today, Tony? I can't understand this constitutional crisis. First of all, I must tell Kenyans we don't have an attorney general. I must repeat. We don't have an attorney general whose job the constitutional dispensation gives to advise the arms of government, the executive, to be a friend to the courts, to be a friend in judicial capacity to help and sort out some of these predicaments in a new constitutional order. I cannot imagine a time when we need a stronger attorney general. When there is conflict between parliament, including the National Assembly and the Senate, against the executive, against the court from and to and from and i want to say this the, the I, 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 I want to say this and please i want to say this it is easy to bust the courts it's easy to bust the president it's easy to bust parliament but each of them are raising constitutional questions some of them which cannot be just determined on a single case alone there needs to be a coordinator of government advice, yeah. legal advice. But Moshimura, yeah. Jeff, yeah. should the blame be directed to the Attorney General's no, office? No, absolutely not. I know Attorney General Gidumwigai. I don't think we have a finer mind in that seat right now than Gidumwigai. You have to understand the constitutional limitation of Gidumwigai. He's just an advisor to the government. Mm -hmm. One arm of the state. There are three arms of the state. He's not an advisor to the judiciary. He's not an advisor to parliament itself. He's an advisor to the government. Personally, the way I see it, we tried to create the independence of judiciary because of the overbearing domination of the judiciary and the parliament by the dictatorial government of Khan with the early days. And I think what we have, what have we done? We have created no holds barred. But look, judiciary, judiciary 
is now exercising impunity of of, of, of a level essentially that should never happen in any civilized democracy. Can I ask you one question? Ask these guys. I don't know what kind of. I'm, I'm a student of law now. Yes. I'm, I'm not a lawyer for your information. Many people think I'm a lawyer. Mm. I'm not a lawyer. But I've taken the interest to understand these things and read them for the last 20 odd years. There's a, there's, a, there's a case, a very celebrated case, which is called Marbury versus uh, Madison, where Adams, you remember the second president yeah. after George Washington, Correct. was Adams, yep. John Adams. John Adams. When John Adams was leaving office, he gave a lot of appointments to many people, which essentially should have been lodged and registered and basically taken over. And he had lost the elections to Jefferson. When Jefferson came, one of them was not completed. It had not gone through the whole process, the one of Marbury. He was appointed as a commission of peace for the for the for the for the, uh, uh, the Columbia district. Somebody went to court to the Supreme Court. The same Marbury went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said yes. Is there is is he aggrieved? Yes. Does there have to be a remedy? Yes. Uh, uh, does he have to be appointed? Yes. Can you give a writ, mandamus? Can you give an order to the executive telling them that you must appoint him? No. The courts can never direct the executive. The courts can never direct. So, Tony, totally, whatever the, the happens, yeah. let, let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. He's brought up American history. No, hold on, hold on. It's yeah. a good point. Yeah. He made his point. But, Tony, let me ask you this. What happened to separation of powers? You know, Besides, speak for, no, he's not a, a good point. Yes. And I speak for myself. Go. He's brought American history. You know that uh, when the Emancipation Proclamation was done by the greatest American president, Jefferson, he, he got his first term. When he tried to abolish slavery by bringing the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. It was Lincoln, there was Lincoln, sorry, it was Lincoln. Yeah. What happened was he was actually objected by Parliament and by Congress. Yeah. But he went back to the people, got a re-election. And through the mandate of the re-election, Lincoln was able to push through the 13th Amendment. Okay. Remember the sovereign will of a country rests with the people. Fine, Tony, My problem is a judiciary. Back to Kenya. I am coming back to the judiciary. Yeah. Removing a popularly elected governor. And then... You know what you said, but it's the people who removed him. I am saying no. The sovereign, can I, can I correct can you? I very clear? Tony, I, want can I, to, I didn't interrupt you. Yeah. A person is elected. The Senate can inquire into your conduct. And when they do, they make a deliberation. But there's MCAs, Tony, the MCAs, you ask member me about of the assembly. I want to be very clear. Jeff, to even in the constitutional amendment, we vested that right with the people. With a million signatures, you can alter any amendment to the constitution. What I'm simply saying, when you have a constitutional crisis of this level, if I was the attorney general, I would urge the president and the ruling party to actually introduce a referendum to the people to bring about some of these conflicts to an end. Because the problem we are having yeah. is competition within self-interest and institutions. Tony, and we must go back to the people on this question. Hold that thought, and I want you to come back after the break. I want you to answer this question. But none of you have answered my question. Who I, I is the governor of Embu County? I never had a, t I, I never had a chance. You're going to get Tony's, <laughs> Tony bats into everything. Oh, my Lord. Tony's an activist. Will someone <laughs> tell me who is the governor of Embu County? No wonder you lost an election know? because of knowing Sorry. that Tony Gashoka is the, not the wrong guy can to go? argue with. Can we go How break? we can go. Thank and you. you bring the tear gas. What do you <laughs> <do>? <laughs> Tear gas. Yeah. That's what Tony needs is tear gas. Oh my, who oh am I? This bench today, oh yeah. At least we're talking. That's important. But for now, let's take another break. Come back and talk more about these so-called separation of powers. Has anybody read the Constitution lately? Back in a moment. Maybe they need to read the Constitution. Tony has not to. And welcome back to a very fiery Jeff Kinangan live at the poolside of the Intercontinental Hotel. The tweets are coming in thick and fast. That's because my guests are former Deputy Speaker Farah Malam. And yes, the perennial gun for hire, Tony Gashoka. Tony, there's a couple of tweets about you here. I have to read them real quick because you're going to love it, man. You're going to love this one. Oscar Sleek says, Tony Gashoka is yet another test you politician and psycho fan. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, Sky T. Karish, again, i gotta, got to read this. Farah, have you been approached by Jubilee leadership for any job post and you declined? Clay Muganda. <laughs> Clay says, Otienu Kajwang told Tony Gashoka and not Jeff. He will be on JKL. So Tony is the booking agent for JKL. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, let me say this. If I'm a test tube baby, Jeff can Wenange, I, let me say I, this. Because, because, oh, oh, no, oh. because they're about saying about test tube. I'm saying you're the test tube baby here gunning for Farah Marin's ODM faction, which is losing on Saturday. <laughs> now, you can call Joho. You can call me a gun for hire. Yeah. You can call Joho a drugs dealer. You, but let I the people I decide. I let the people decide. It's Saturday. <laughs> you think it's only win? Wednesday. You think he's going to win? Koinange, it's only Wednesday. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> it's only Wednesday. And Joho's going to beat and Ababu are going to beat Raila's lineup. That's the bottom now, line. Now, now, let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you. Tony, in his haste to celebrate inadvertently, he's already showing you as a, as a, as a diehard TNA, he wants that group to win. <laughs> There's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. Uh -huh. He wouldn't want them to win uh -huh. so that ODM wins the presidency. No. <laughs> when it comes to president, he said ODM will perennially be in the opposition as long as Huri is there. But he would want that group to win. I see. That, now you read between the lines. Let oh. me just finish. Let me just finish. Now, let me tell you one thing. All I'm saying is that we need to allow parties to have their own internal dynamics in a manner that essentially is like a club. That should not be stomping the country because you don't need that universal suffrage. It has to be in a manner that, and a club, a club usually decides and comes out united. We have tried to accommodate, as a party, we have tried to accommodate all the wishes of all these people, including creating additional officers. They said no. These parties, though, Moshimiwa, are less than 10 years old. Yes, We yes. are still in our nascent yes, stage, yes, if yes, you will. Yes, yes, we're, we're, we're babies. We're crawling yes, when yes. it comes to political yes. parties. Yeah, yeah. Or them, that club is nine years about. old. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And TNA is what? A year and change? Something like that. Now, let me, let me talk about the constitution. Let me talk about the constitution. We're coming see, back to separation of bars now. No, no. There's, there was the issue of what the constitution says about that problem. Yes. And, and you see, the constitution is very clear. Uh, I don't think Tony has read the constitution. He needs to read the constitution. The process of removing the president is very elaborate and is there in the constitution. It's not even in a statute, nor in a piece of legislation. The process also for removing the governor is there. And they went through all that process. Personally, I'm, I, I know Wambora. I have a lot of respect for Wambora. And I think he's a very good man. He's a fine man. Any day, I, I would have my votes for him. because. The process that essentially tries to establish that he has acted erroneously. I don't know what the merits or the merits of that is. But this is this is this is the, this is politics. The man is a political appointee. He's like a governor or a president like any other country. There's a process of impeachment. You could be impeached when you're still an innocent person. You, you understand my point? It's just a question of how those people you're working with think about you. So who was right? Judiciary or Senate? No, no, judiciary can never the MCS did what they were supposed to do. Legally, constitutionally, mm -hmm. practice-wise, traditions all over the world, Wambora is no longer the government. Should, finished. should Wambora be government? Yeah, well, order. Just to, can, 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 can I finish? Can I finish? I want to be very, I've been interrupted. There there was a court order. Should Wambora still be government? There was a court order barring the MCA from sitting. Any action that they did contrary to the court order is illegal to that extent, and therefore the Senate did not properly sit can, can to impeach Wambora. Can I hear this point? And can, I'm saying, if the Kenyan people don't like the powers that are bestowed on the courts, and the Supreme Court of Kenya, they can change it in a referendum. But as it exists now, when the court order is given, every institution of government must accept the court as the interpreter of the constitution where there is a conflict between arms and Does that mean the Senate the is a toothless listen, bulldog? Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Tony is just talking in a wishful manner. Tony, give me the authority in these things in any democracy. Could I give you? No, no, no. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. You can give me the authority and you tell me where a court has overruled a Senate or overruled a legislature anywhere in the world. It has no powers. Listen. Legislature, you mean? Legislature. What you call the independent arms of the government mm -hmm. is that within the functions, the constitutional and statutory functions of each one of them, none of them can interfere with the other. You know, you, legislature has so much freedom in terms of making laws and in their own scrutiny and oversight roles to the extent which they can even go ahead and create an unconstitutional law. And all that the judges can do is to wait until the matter is brought before them in litigation and say that this piece of legislation is unconstitutional. They can only interpret it when it's there. They cannot interfere with the functions of the legislature. The same way the legislature cannot interfere with the functions of the judiciary. For example, the judiciary right now has got a legal department. Uh, parliament has a legal department. That legal department cannot summon judges and try and question them on how they have been administering, administering justice. Mm. And say that, Jeff, if you wish to... Go on, go on. I'm saying there was a court order 
which was a judicial process barring the MCA in Embu from sitting to discuss the deliberate the conduct of Wambora. They disobeyed and disregard of that court order went ahead to forward their recommendations to the Senate. The Senate, in disregard of that existing order, went ahead to make a determination and remove Wambora from office. Now the court of appeal sitting in Embu has stayed the removal of Wambora from office on the basis of an application that a court order was violated. Yeah. So uh, Father Marim cannot say that I don't understand the constitution. If he's learning law, I would like to change his university because every ordinary Kenyan understands what is a court order. If this was a chicken thief in Kawangware with a court order, you will be inside for abuse of the court process. But because this is the Senate and politicians do not respect the rule of law, even when the petition was ruled by the Supreme Court, the TNA and Jubilee had won, they also said no that the court was crazy okay and William Mutunga said then Jeff if you remember if you continue to disregard the court this way and bring political contest in the Supreme Court you will destroy the judiciary in Kenya and I'm saying the Senate and the governors want to destroy the judiciary by bringing political problems into the court of the judiciary take them back to the people in the court of public opinion let the people re-elect Wambora or not I would say this if Wambora is wanted in Embu let us go for a re-election and let him be elected or not what about the other nine or eleven percent governors who who was summoned to the National Assembly. We, to we need an amendment in the Constitution that says when a uh, governor is recalled, he goes for a by-election and an election is called and the people decide. Not nine judges, not two, not three, and not Fala Malim, certainly not ODM. But you know, we're never going to get forward. We're never going to move forward if every day, whatever just, happens, just, it just, goes to the court. Just, whatever just, happens, throw them back in the court. Which we're, we're never going to move forward. I think we're wasting a lot of time on non-issues. These things are in the Constitution. Listen to me carefully. They're in the Constitution. It doesn't matter how, how much one of us shouts or the whole crowd or even the 40 million Kenyans shout there. The law is the law. The law can be an ass, but the law is the law until it's amended. Mm -hmm. The Constitution is the Constitution until there are requisite amendments that are brought in there. Right now, the process that was undertaken, what John Tony needs to understand is that the county assembly is a legislative body. It's a devolved legislative body. No courts or executive can tell them how to transact their business. That is what you call the independence of the legislature. The legislature is not three, three tire or two tire. At the national level, the Senate and the National Assembly, and, and then at the county level, the county. Nobody can tell the county that you cannot deliberate on this, you cannot remove so and so. It, it doesn't exist anymore. But maybe at the end of the day, these people haven't read their constitution. Precisely. Precisely. Now, Jeff, I have, and I'm asking the Honorable the Attorney General, who's my friend, he thinks he's the only friend of the Attorney General, to help draft a law where we can amend the constitution of Kenya, an amendment, I mean, to change the constitution of Kenya, where a governor is impeached or removed from office, an automatic violation ensues, and that election is decided by the people so that the people can have the final say on who is their governor by a democratic process, not a judicial process. Tony, at the end of the day, uh, we're uh, running uh, around in circles, aren't we? We are running around in circles. Whatever happened to this country taking off? Whatever happened to discussing issues? Now we're discussing pettiness. Now everyone's in court. The lawyers out there are the ones milking this thing. They're laughing all the way. So, so you, you want to leave it that way or you want to fix up, the puncture? Up until, up the only way you're going to fix the puncture, let me ask you, who appointed Nasir, uh, uh, Abraham, uh, Ibrahim uh, uh, Nasir? Ah, to, be the, yeah, to be the lawyer for with this person. Who is paying? The public? Who is paying for these expensive lawyers? Who is paying for my good friend Paul Moite to represent Wabora? Who is paying for these lawyers? Is it the public or is it the person? What I'm asking is this. If we are going to become a litigious society, that everything we do is in the courtrooms, our courtrooms will be full of these political cases and will not do anything to help the common man. These are political issues that must be settled politically. Uh, uh, whatever, whatever Tony wants us to do, whatever amendments he wants us to bring, whatever pieces of legislation he wants us to bring to change the, 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 the certain provisions of the Constitution yeah. can only be brought at a later date. For today, we cannot say because we are going to form a, have a Constitution a year down the line or two years down the line waiting for the Attorney General. You have to judge you have to go by the constitution as it is today, yeah. whether one likes it or not. Yeah. And the constitution is very clear, it's very clear. on how to remove a, a, a president, how to remove a, a governor, and it's all more how clear. To remove any individual. Any individual. How to have even the right of recall for a member of parliament. Yeah. Can, I, can I just explain? Supposing today, for argument's sake, a certain ambassador who is posted to another place believes that the president wants to remove him because he has not re represented the interests of the country very well and recall him and assign him other duties. And then he runs to the court. 
<laughs> and, the, and the court says the president cannot remove him. What happens? You see that? Jeff, the constitution, says, no. the constitution says MPs are the people who make laws for money. Now the MPs are saying we are cutting the money for the counties. No, no, we are going to count the money. Ask, ask no, I'm putting it to you. The law is not perfect. The, the constitution mm. is imperfect. The, law the MPs yeah. can pass laws to increase their own salaries. Yeah. They can pass laws to reduce county budgets. They can pass laws to blackmail governors. The MPs can sit today as they did in a Kamkunji and pass law. And he's saying because the legislature has done so, so be it. And I'm saying, when a government oversees the power of the people, the people have a right to take back their government. And the whole idea of constitutionalism in Kenya, why Wangari Madai died for it, why Joya was beaten for it, why I was jailed for it, was because the people have the sovereign power. And if these institutions we have given all want money, governors want salaries, and these salaries, judges and lawyers, we must ask ourselves, can we pay for this devolved system? Can we afford all these court cases? Yeah, Tony, you have to be in every story, right? Let me ask you this. Actually, Abdullah, he Yusuf has a question for you. Ask Tony, what about the, the warrant of arrest for Mutea Iringo, which the IG said he won't execute? That is completely incompetent, and the man should have been arrested immediately, already in court, and that action, I don't understand who made it. In Kimayo, Kimayo himself is in breach of a court uh, order, and he himself should be brought to the court, either to give an apology or sent to civil jail to serve for contempt. Gentlemen, unacceptable. Gentlemen, we've got a couple of minutes. We're going to have you first closing remarks. Uh, yeah, oh. you, you see... We have a constitution. There is no, uh, but we haven't uh, raised any issue whether which is not, which is not captured in our constitution now. The constitution is there. It could be bad. It could be, you know, good. It could be better. Until we make it better, until you change those provisions of the constitution yourself, the constitution remains the constitution. You see what I mean? Uh, the law can be an ass, but the law is the law until it's amended. As it is right now, I, I think we don't. We have a problem of a lot of mediocrity in the country. Serious mediocrity in the country. And we think by making a lot of noise and going out there and getting the masses to move. The masses, although we, it says we the people, 40, 40 million Kenyans do not appear their signatures there. Legislative authority or sovereignty itself is exercised through the elected or the elected leaders. Real quick. And that's what parliament is about. Real quick, Friday, who wins? Which faction? Joho Ababu or the other? Oh, I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be some sanity and people are going to come together and decide that there's going to be a consensus and they will agree on that. In the absence of an agreement on that, I, I don't want to imagine what the consequence is. It's not going to be good. But let me tell you one thing. Sooner than later, mm. Kenyans will understand all those intrigues. So my, friend, thoughts. my friend Jeff Koenange and fellow Kenyans, Nelson Mandela and apartheid were legal. Mandela was jailed by an apartheid court that had the law on its side. So was this great Kenyan who was called Kenneth Matiba. Detention and frail by the law under Daniel Moy. And I want to say this, slavery was legal in England and all of the states of the world. And black men were shipped like goats for years, but it was legal. But some people made some noise. Sir Wilberforce made some noise. People in South Africa, the ANC made some noise. And today Tony Gashoka is making some noise. And I'm saying take it back to the people and fix your government. It belongs to you, the people. It doesn't belong to the governor. It doesn't belong to the president. It doesn't belong to Farah Marim. And good night, Jeff Koenange. And next time, open the fire extinguisher. <laughs> what, what's government of the people? Abol 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 by the people. people, for the people. There was abolition before that. Government abolition. of the people. Gentlemen, abolition Let's continue the this government conversation. Government of the people, goodness. by the people, even my, and for the people. Even my Twitter. My goodness. Is <laughs> my God. It's oh. on fire. These two guys. But you know what? At least we're talking. Somebody, you said I'm gonna, they're gonna replace my well, iPad. Mandela right? will never die because he was never quiet. Neither will I. <laughs> Tomorrow night, another show just like this. If not smokier, make sure you spread the word. 7:45, right here, Kenya's Television Network. In the meantime, news continues with Ivan Okwara and Wilson Buru. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. Good night. Good luck. Someone give me an iPad or Nokia, something. Tell John you're not to come next week. <laughs>